So if you're new to something, you've never done it, there's this sort of barrier, there's this like emotional barrier that's kind of getting in the way of you trying. You don't want to step out because you know it'll be painful, it might hurt your self-esteem, you don't want to take the failures, you don't want to take the rejections. If you got into sort of an intermediate level and you're sort of like plateauing, maybe you know, you're starting to get some kind of results, you're getting a little bit comfortable, but you know you should be getting more, how do you find that leverage on yourself? How do you get the right attitude and the right process to continue that upward trajectory so that you're not just plateauing? Or what if you are advanced, but you need to step out and start finding new resources? Maybe what got you to the level you're at isn't working anymore, and you need to find new creative solutions. Or finally, and this can be almost the most insidious and worst of any of them, what if you are very advanced, but you've been out of practice? Right? What if you have this identity and this ego that I'm very good at a particular thing, but I took six months off because I was working on you know, my business or working on my health, or you know, if it's gay, maybe because you, know, you got a girlfriend, and you haven't been out there hitting it hard. And so now you're like, I know how good I was. My self-esteem and my belief is that I'm not good. And if I go do an approach, I know that my performance will be less than that. So it can be almost crippling because you don't want to hurt your self-esteem. It can be even worse if you're in the public eye when you know, every time you go out to game, people are watching you. And so you know you're being judged or you're, you're constantly on film, that kind of stuff. So this is something I know a lot about uh, from an instructor level. In any case, whatever level you're at, it's kind of the same process of finding the leverage on yourself, finding the proper path to allow yourself that creativity and expression, and then the same methodology of exactly how to step it up to higher and higher levels. All right, so let's look at a couple of these scenarios. Um, let's say that you are getting started in the gym. Either you're getting back into the gym or you haven't worked out in a long time. Well, that first week you go back is gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt tremendously, and you're gonna wanna quit. After two days, you're gonna be like, oh my God, how could anybody deal with this? You know what, I think my body needs rest. Let me just rest until I'm not sore again, then I'll keep it going. And guess what? If you rest until you're not sore again, then when you go do it again, you're gonna be super sore again. And you're like, oh, I need to rest. But if you just push through that soreness and go a couple more days and just do the best you can, again, maybe your performance will be less because you're sore, but you do the best you can, eventually your body will acclimate to that level of stress you're putting it under and you will learn to perform under those conditions. And when that starts to happen, then you get the gym three times, four times, even almost every single day. And then you're gonna start to see the results you really want and you're gonna start to be able to form the habits you want. But in order to get there, you have to push through that initial barrier of pain, right? If you don't push through that barrier of pain, you're never gonna get anywhere. And this is a lot like someone who's new to game, right? At first, if you've never done a cold approach, your first one probably isn't gonna go amazingly well. But if you go in and just say, look, this is something I have to do, it might hurt a little bit, but it's for me and it's the right thing to do, and I know, I trust the process and I'm gonna get there, that will help you. Also, if you focus on whatever little positives there are, or reframe things as a positive, right? For example, in the gym, that soreness, you should be happy, like, yeah, my muscles are growing, I can feel it, that's amazing, I'm into this. Right? Similarly, a cold approach would be like, yeah, I took a strong rejection like a man. That means I'm like hardening those emotional calluses. I'm getting better and better with every single approach. You're like, oh yeah, that girl may have hated me, but she smiled. I almost turned it around. I'm getting there. This is awesome. I'm learning, right? I'm learning. I'm growing. That's where your focus should be. If your focus is just on the result, you're gonna be very frustrated no matter what level you're at. But if your focus is on I'm learning and I'm growing, no one can stop you from learning and growing from every single interaction, from every single attempt. Let's take another example that happens a lot to guys. Say that you get a new job, and that first, I don't know, couple weeks or a month in that new job, you're scared shitless. You don't know what you're doing, you're doing on-the-job training, you're confused, you're lost, seems like everybody's yelling at you, and you work so, so, so hard to get up to speed. You'll do anything and everything. You don't wanna get fired, you wanna fit in, and then at a certain point, you've kinda of figured it out. You kinda of get it, and you start to be comfortable in that job. And now you're like, okay, good, I got this now. And you're relaxed and you're happy. But guess what? In a certain way, that happiness is the worst thing that could possibly happen to you because now you're gonna be complacent. And a lot of people do. They get in this job, they get comfortable in it, and then 15 years later, they're in the same job. They've no, made no progress, they've made no advancement, they haven't learned that many new skills, and they look back and like, where did the last 15 years go? Imagine if instead, you worked just as hard once you were comfortable as you did that first month when you were scrambling. How many promotions would you get? How much higher would you elevate yourself, and again, how much would you learn, right? It's about the learning, it's about the growth. How much would you learn, how much would you grow? Because end of the day, everything you do, you know, you can't take it with you, but you can still like 
you can still enjoy the fact that you did it. You can still enjoy the character you built through the process and who you became from the process. As well as obviously the great thing is when you do the right process, you get the right results and those are fun too. Or let's say finally, maybe you've reached the level of CEO in a company, right? Or like president, you're the leader. And you're like, yeah, I've arrived, I'm here. You go in for your first day at the new job and you look at your desk and you're like, oh shit. Now I have to actually run this thing? Oh my God, what's going on here? And you have this whole new challenge. And a lot of people in that moment, they freeze up as well because they don't want their first decision to be a bad one. And they don't want to step out and take on that new role and that new authority. And they have to understand they're not gonna be perfect. If you're in a new role, you're unfamiliar, you're not gonna be perfect. But the worst thing you can do is no action because then again, you don't learn anything. Again, it's about the learning, it's about the growth because that's the only thing that we can really control and that's what gets us there eventually. It doesn't matter where you're at on that path, it matters that you're moving along the path. So you need to accept the pain, understand the pain, know where it comes from, and actually enjoy the pain a little bit. Know that pain is growth. Here's a philosophy I've always had, which is anytime it's hard, I'm happy. You know why? That's my opportunity to set myself apart. Everything that's easy, everybody else is doing it. Everybody on the street is doing all the easy stuff, the easy things, right? But the hard things, maybe 1% are doing those. So that's your opportunity to set yourself apart when you have the hard stuff come up. So be very, very happy when that is the case. Next, I wanna to talk to you about getting rid of your ego in this process. When you're new and you haven't done anything, you have sort of your static ego you've had your whole life. You try some new action, that's a threat to your ego. You're gonna resist that. You're not gonna to wanna to step up. And the funny thing about that one is it gets worse. If you get to intermediate, you're like, well, I've had a certain level of success. I don't wanna try anything new. I don't wanna try anything that might have me do worse because I've become attached to my level of success. And worse yet is if you get to an advanced level, now you really have that idea of like, oh, I'm at this level. Oh, she's not hot enough for me, I won't do that. Or, oh no, I'm, you know, you can't even get to a point, if you, if you get to a high enough level where you're used to pulling on a regular basis, you can think every single interaction where you don't take a girl home is a failure, and it's not. A lot of times you get a solid number, it can go great, and always you learned and you grew. It's always a success, but it's so easy to get trapped in that mentality because of your ego of thinking that it's a failure, right? It's so easy to cling to the idea of what, what you think you are or where you were rather than risk it, put it out there, and force yourself to continue to perform. So that's what you wanna do, you wanna step up, do those kind of things. Another thing, and this is process, but it's the mentality of the process, a lot of times in order to get better, you are going to have to get worse, okay? Let's say we have like a bodybuilder, and he's, you know, he got all, got all big, he got all like tight, and he's, he's great, wins a competition, right? And now it's time for him to start training for the next competition. In order to win that next one, he's gonna have to be even bigger, even thinner, even better. If he tries to stay thin the entire way and tries to keep that like picture perfect physique as he trains to get bigger, it'll take him a really, really long time to get there, if at all. But if he's willing to put on the muscle any way he can, and he's willing to get a little fat in the process because that is how he'll put on the muscle quickly, that's how he's consuming enough calories to feed that growing muscle, he's gonna get a little chubby in the process and then he's gonna have to cut it back down. He has to make his body look a little worse for a period of time in order to make it better. It's the same thing with game. Once you get to a certain level, you have this like package of how you're presenting yourself that's working. But if you wanna to get to the next level, you're gonna to have to adjust things in that package. When you adjust one thing, it might make it incongruent with something else. Or it might make you, know, it might make you a little too polarizing and some, some people might get offended, right? But you have to do it, otherwise you never will get to that next level. You have to get a little chubby in your game temporarily in order to get bigger overall. You have to get a little worse with the sixes, sevens, and eights in order to step up to the tens long term that you really want. There's a really great example of this phenomenon in game and it's something people don't talk about much. It's what I like to call advanced approach anxiety. When people start out in game, they have approach anxiety. They're afraid to talk to a girl. Then they kind of accept that newbie mentality and they start doing approaches, they get used to it. They kind of are in that intermediate phrase and they understand they're not that good. They know they have to do work and they, they still, you know, they do the approaches, they're used to it. And then they get to a level where they're advanced. They've gotten some results and they start to have an identity, an ego around how good they are. And worse yet, maybe the other people around them, their, their wings, their crew, um, you know, people on YouTube that are watching an RSD instructor, start to have an opinion of them as well. And now the person, the advanced guy, he has this identity to live up to and he becomes very scared to risk it, right? Because if he risks it and he's successful, well, okay, fine, he had another success, who the fuck cares? But if he risks it and he's unsuccessful, that hurts. 
that one's gonna hurt. And so he looks at this sort of like payout. He's like, well, there's not a lot of upside. There's a lot of downside. And so he becomes paralyzed. In fact, he can have worse approach anxiety than the newbie even has because it's so attached and ingrained in his ego. What you need to do is put that aside and do the right thing in spite of it. The key thing is practice non-judgment. Doesn't matter how good you were a year ago. Doesn't matter how good you were six months ago. It doesn't matter how good you were the last time you did an approach. You are however you are right now and the only standard you should measure yourself up against is what can I do right now and how much can I learn? If you do that on an ongoing consistent basis, you're gonna get amazing results and more importantly maybe even than that, you're gonna live with yourself, be happy with yourself and you're going to grow on a fundamental level as a human being, right? But fortunately, that also is the path to the absolute best results. That phenomenon of advanced approach anxiety is truly insidious and really gets at you at an advanced level. But the same general principle occurs at an intermediate level or even a beginner level where you, you're attached to a certain identity, you're clinging to it, and you don't want to risk it. You don't want to get worse in order to get better, but you have to, because there always is a bigger and bigger level. And if you're on the right path, your best set, the one that you're holding your identity on and like hoping is your set every time, will be your average set in six months and you'll just be at an entirely new level. If you cling to where you're at, you may even go backwards. Your best set now, you may not even be able to hit that in six months. So it's so, so critical that you stay on that path. So again, what are the steps? Number one, take action. Take action. Nothing happens until something moves. You have to step up and do something. Now there is going to be pain associated. You are to not judge yourself, right? Don't judge it. In fact, if anything, judge it positively. Embrace the pain, love the pain. Understand that that's learning and that is your opportunity to step up. You should feel when you're having that painful experience that this is your moment to be special. And if you truly do that, other people aren't gonna be judging you either, at least not negatively. They're gonna be looking at you and being like, oh my God, what's that guy doing? I wanna do that. And it'll encourage them to step up as well, all right? So don't judge me and, and don't worry about the judgment of others. Most people are not judging you, they're too busy worrying about themselves, and if anything, they're positive. And you know what? If they're a negative, judgmental motherfucker, just, you know what? Fuck them. Who cares? It doesn't even matter. Lastly, remember, you have to get worse in order to get better. You gotta get fat in your game in order to get big in your game, all right? Very, very important to understand that there are those ebbs and flows, and if you try and stay static, you will literally stay static. That's how plateaus happen. But if you're going up and down, you're trying new things, you're pushing your comfort zone, you will continue to grow.